Hello world, this is Random Fix and we are in the van. The van is all complete. It's been road tested through 24 states and nothing has really broken, which is great news considering my last experience with the RV. Basically put me in the shop for a whole year and building my own van has been a much better experience. And I actually love driving the van compared to an RV and the kids loved it. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be discussing the 12 things I wish I would have known before I started the van build. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we are in the van, the van is complete. And I'm gonna talk about the 12 things I wish I would have known before I started the van build. And let's go ahead and start this off with number one. And number one is gonna be get your warranty work done ahead of time before you touch one screw on the van. You wanna go and get those recalls done. If you bought a new van, get all the warranty work done. If it has an existing warranty that's left over, get anything that needs attention looked at, documented before you take anything apart as the dealership will go ahead and try to blame you for some unrelated repairs just because they're in the business of making things harder for consumers and they don't want to pay. Number two is going to be planning ahead. So when I got the van, I was in here with tape measures, checking the width, the length, doing everything I could to make sure that I thought about everything that was going to go in, including the kitchen galley, the bathroom, the two beds back there, the refrigerator, and making sure I had enough room to walk, everything was going to fit and I was gonna have a functioning van. And there were some apps on the phone and the computer that you basically had to pay for to go ahead and utilize such features. I am not a computer programmer. I do not wanna become a computer programmer. And some of them are really advanced. Then one day I discovered sportsmobile.com and sportsmobile.com was really cool because it gave me all the different layouts for the Sprinter, the ProMaster and also the Transit and all the different configurations that they came in. They also have some sample templates for you to consider. And then they have this design studio and they have a paper version as well. And I really like the paper version because I basically just cut it out and I was able to move things around the way I wanted to and make sure it was to scale. And it worked out for me really great. And I'll have a quick link to Schwartzmobile.com in the video description. Number three, keep things simple. So I do have a true induction cooktop right there in the galley and it's nice, it's sleek and it was a headache to put in, cost some money and basically it took me all day long to figure out how to go ahead and mount it in there. And then one day I had to go ahead and get a new inverter because your inverters will go out on you unless you get the right one, which I finally did find. And I had to go and stop by a Walmart because I realized my inverter wouldn't run my true induction digital cooktop because it wasn't sine wave. Long story short, I use this and I really like this. And this was so much simpler to operate. And sometimes when you're gone camping, you want to cook outside. This allows you to do that. You want to cook inside. This allows you to do that. And you need a new stove. Guess what, guys? You got something for 20 bucks and you can go ahead and just buy it. No installation, nothing required. And literally simplicity guys is sometimes gonna be king. And this is something I wish I would have considered a little bit more than the aesthetics as that's nice, this is better. And number four is similar to number three in the simplicity factor. So I have a convection microwave that's actually mounted in the kitchen galley here. And I do like it, however, on a recent trip, I took a simple air fryer with me and I like it a lot better. A, again, it was portable. It was a whole lot cheaper. It doesn't take up as much space. And the nice thing about the portable air fryer is you can take it outside. So if you ran extra power ports around the van, I can cook in the back. I can cook right here. I can cook outside. And it was very, very simple. And it would have saved me probably about five, six hours of insulation and it weighs probably a tenth of what the convection oven weighs, which is really nice. Hey everybody, if you guys are enjoying this video here on the 12 things I wish I would have known before I started 
my camper build, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up as it lets YouTube know that I'm bringing you guys valuable content. And also, I would love to hear back from you guys. So if there's something on the video I didn't mention, please leave it in the comment box down below. Thanks. Number five, don't buy something because it's cheap. So this right here is an electronic solenoid and it allows water to go in and go out. And I have one of these installed, not this one, because this is a cheap piece of junk from AliExpress. And I got a much better version here in the US. So do not buy cheap electronics off AliExpress such as this. This battery shunt ish thing that basically is gonna be a horrible idea to install in your van or these really tiny so that was pretty crazy my phone just got so hot that it stopped recording so let me go ahead and continue now or these tiny cabinet latches that don't work and some stupid youtuber showed you these and you should have known better and not bought these because they were literally a waste of time and now you got them on sale on offer up for 99 cents and nobody's hit you up and you have about 10 packs of these not fun number six overbuild your wiring system so after my inverter was giving me grief i thought it was the wiring so i went ahead and ran new grounds and thicker cables only to discover there was really nothing wrong with my grounds however in that process i did discover something i discovered this it is so much easier to go ahead and run that thicker ground when you got everything apart and you have access to it then to go ahead and do it when you're done with everything and then you're trying to squeeze your hand and you can't really see anything take an extra couple of minutes run extra wires extra leads whenever possible and buy the best possible cable you can number seven overbuild your battery banks so when i first started with the van here, I had one battery that was 280 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate. And it served the van, everything would work, the PS4, the TVs, and even some of the electronics like the induction cooktop would turn on. One thing I did realize though, it was such a big load on that battery that it was actually damaging the battery faster. So what you wanna do is go ahead and maybe double or triple or quadruple your load, your capacity because you're gonna go and lengthen the battery lifespan. And then you're also gonna have so much excess power that you can run electronic heaters. You can go ahead and leave your refrigerator running without having to go and making sure that it's off because you will make those mistakes. You don't have to go and yell at the kids in case they left the game console on while you went to the mall for five or six hours. It is just so much more convenient. And honestly, if you build the batteries yourself, you can do it for a fraction of the cost. And I'll have a video link down below where I actually walk you through the whole process of building your own battery. And a completed battery like that for 280 amp hours will cost you about $600 delivered. And also it's Bluetooth controlled. So you can go ahead and access it from anywhere in the van. Number eight, avoid making your van into Swiss cheese by having to make holes all over the van. So this was something I was really struggling with and I did not want to make a hole here by the kitchen. I didn't want to make a hole in the shower area through the van. And so what I would recommend doing if you guys are interested in doing a similar setup is running the pipes inside the van and building little boxes right on top of them. They actually serve as little steps too. So you can step right on top of there. No one can damage them. They're pretty cool. And I'll have a video link down below about simple plumbing in case you guys don't want to sit there and start making holes all over your van. You guys could definitely check that out as well. Number nine, avoid running to the store every couple of minutes. When I first started the van build, I was going to the store twice a day. So I know every single aisle of Home Depot, Lowe's, and also Ace. And here's what I discovered after completing the van. I wish I would have just bought extra and then returned it after I was done with the van as it was becoming a really big task every single day to have to go back for that one valve or that one box of screws that you ran out of. So go ahead and buy in bulk, in store, and just keep a nice organized area around your garage so you can go ahead and know which are returns, which things you're keeping, which are gonna be online orders. And this will basically 
minimize losing any money because of the return window closing with Amazon or any other vendor out there. And also I discovered this really cool kit, which I'll show you guys on the screen. And it comes with three boxes of all the different kinds of screws you may need. And this was a complete lifesaver to me. I just wish I found out about it sooner. And so I would highly encourage you guys to have this particular box as it's got most of the washers, locking washers, screws, wood screws, metal screws, everything's in there. And it's way cheaper than having to buy them from the store for basically 25 cents a screw nowadays. So remember, shopping locally will A, support your local stores. You don't have to spend hours on the phone with Amazon wondering where your return is. And C, you don't have to keep running to the UPS store, dropping things off, packaging them up. Number 10, avoid making anything permanent in the van. So I see a lot of times people are putting in a bathroom and they have these cassette style toilets. And to put the cassette style toilet in, most times you have to actually make a hole pretty sizable hole on the panels of the van and you want to try to avoid really doing that as one of the things that I realized with the van is maybe in five ten years I might have a different idea I may want to go ahead and put the kitchen in the back move the beds up here you never know but once that panel is cut you're not going to be able to just go get a new panel and slap it in these panels that are built into these vans are actually welded in and it's a lot of money to go ahead and replace those and having the option to change it down the line makes me feel better about doing a future upgrade if I decided to do so. Number 11. One of the issues I had when I started was making sure that I had everything in stock before I started that particular part of the project and I was running into a lot of shipping issues. Whenever possible guys order ahead, order early and just make sure you guys got the right part that way you don't really have to worry about the returns and the return window on most sites is going to be about 30 days and make sure you keep that in mind as we go into number 12. Number 12 you really don't know how long it is going to take you to complete your van until you start and you got everything ripped out and you look at the empty shell of the van and you go oh my god what did I just do what have I done so you start working on on the weekends and there's only eight days on the weekends in a month so you those eight days go by and your hands are hurting you're tired from work and the van is basically still all apart and you realize this is going to take you years because you hear about all these stories and people that took them two or three years to complete their van and honestly guys this is not the right way of doing this if you want to start on a van i would highly suggest taking a vacation time from work holiday pay, sick pay, whatever you have available, go ahead and do it and focus on the van almost six or seven days a week to get it complete. Because the longer it drags on, you're gonna go ahead and increase the chances of misplacing a component. This has happened to me. I misplaced the latches for the galley here and I paid another 75 bucks to buy another cabinet just like this, just for the latches. Cause I needed them. And then you start forgetting where some of the screws went in and the whole thing is just a mess. So myself, it took me 28 days to get this van complete. And the way I did it was after the eighth day or fourth weekend, I realized I can't do this anymore. I took time off from work and I literally just came in here and I cranked away on it from eight o'clock in the morning till about nine o'clock at night, had Vietnamese coffee three times a day and I would just keep doing it. And towards the end, my hands were hurting and I remember I had to actually get a hand massage. I'm glad I did get it done and we are able to enjoy it now and I hope you guys found some value in the video. So if you did go ahead and give the video a thumbs up as it really lets YouTube know that I am doing a good job. Let me know what you guys think about my idea to go super simple in the van. If you guys are new to the channel also consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button right here in case I got it wrong right here and you guys will find links to anything in the van that you guys are seeing here including the kitchen galley which i did for under 300 dollars the bug screen for 40 bucks so you guys will find those below